my tiniest little pumpkins. I brought you back in to let you check out what I've done with the old orangutan space. Now remember, this was where they've always been. They're little balls floating down there in the water. <laughs> but this is where they always were since the inception of Suyana, way back in the day. Um, but it was, I kind of overdid it with waterfalls, like I tend to do sometimes. You guys usually forgive me on that, but it was, uh, it was definitely a product of two years ago when I was, you know, well, like we all do. We all practice and get better. One guy, though, I told uh, Simply Savannah, and she's like, okay, is that an insult or a compliment? Because the guy was like, dude, I remember when my zoos used to suck, too. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, this is like a world's fair. But, you know, if you practice and get better, like I have, my zoos actually look like real zoos now. And not like this. <laughs> It was like, I, I don't know how to take it. I was like, well, okay, <laughs> okay, buddy. I, I'll, get, I'll get right on that. I'll try. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so anyways, this uh, turned out so freaking awesome for one simple fact. Lucas 070 decided to put this uh, orangutan climbing frame on the workshop. And um, as I was putting this together and building this out, Kind of like you see it now, kind of like as a little island. They got another little ball over here. Um, it just fit perfect. There were a couple things that I, uh, there were a couple things I had to kind of, you know, move around just a little bit. But for the most part, this thing, like how exactly how he had it, is kind of exactly how it fit over here. And look at these little guys going across this. And that was a question. Uh, we know this is a realistic because obviously I'm not in the realistic realm. They would absolutely jump from this pole to this rock and go over the fence or these trees or this. They would use this pole to jump into this tree to come down. But you guys know me. I'm more for theming and more for just the aesthetic. But I was going to ask you guys, without doing a ton of research, do they let them go this high? Like, how do they, like some of you zoo people, how, how high do they let them go on these type of ropes before they're like afraid that they would fall and hurt themselves? You know, that's kind of what I was wondering when I was laying this down, I was like, dang, those things are high. Would they let them go up that high? And so you'll have to let me know kind of if you've uh, if you've done any research on that or if you have some real world uh, zoo experience, what do they kind of, you know, like as far as chimpanzees and, you know, these primates, what do they typically cap them at to where like, okay, that's not safe, that's too high or like, if they couldn't get them to come down, like you would think they would have problems. Like you can't, I don't know, like you would tranquilize them up that high and then have to worry about like them falling and trying to catch them. I just, uh, I thought that was interesting kind of putting this together. So yeah, I have to get your thoughts on that. But yeah, we've got the little, I've almost got the little creek down here that's separated by the rocks. And uh, I still have some work to do back there, but I thought that would, I thought this would be a good spot to give them a little waterfall. Just kind of give a little action back there to the back of the habitat. But I tell you what, they love climbing on this stuff. And wouldn't this right here, like th this would be an awesome presentation area. I mean, even look for the little kids. I have like some little step up blocks and we have, I found these on the workshop years ago. I've got a little set of binoculars here that you could look through and kind of watch them climb. So this whole area, it just looks so much better now than it did a couple years ago. Um, remember like, okay, right now we've got the orangutans like looking back over towards the shopping. This was all the crocodile area. Remember, this was like a big croc lagoon. And now I've kind of made it as just like a little... Um, almost like a little passive, just little pond, little lagoon area. Um, you know, not just thinking I have to just cram stuff into every little corner. Um, just kind of open this up just for some water right there. And I think it looks, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, did make the decision. You guys may have not even noticed this in the cinematic from a couple days ago, but I wanted to remove the rock climbing walls just to give a better view of the 
exhibit. And of course, we've got the construction walls up right now. Got the little pardon our dust sign because I think I am going to put like a little habitat in here. And that's kind of what I, I want to, um, what I, I'd like to know from you guys. Like, what do you think should go right there? Because this is your, this is your main little path. You know, you're making your way down through here, just getting started out with the zoo. Um, like Bold's, uh, whoops, excuse me. Bold's little, uh, Elephant Springs area is going out there. She made me the, the awesome little sign. So I'm going to get working on that soon. Um, I even put up a little coming soon sign on these construction walls. Hopefully I get that done by spring. So all out through there is going to be, you know, crystal. It's going to be like, going to be like um, Disney Springs. Kind of like my Planet Coaster project. If you've been keeping up with that, that's what I think I'm going to do out here. It's going to be Indian elephants and rhinos and... It's going to have its whole like elephant spring uh, moment out there. And this is the custom sign that Bold made me. Absolutely incredible. Um, did exactly like just picture perfect design from Fort Worth Zoo's um, elephant springs area. But back on to what we were talking about. What do you guys think should go there? You have the Komodo Dragon Island right here. So this is like the first thing people can kind of kind of come up on when they first get to the zoo. You know, come say hi to these three guys. And I found this really cool information board on the workshop from uh, the Komodo Islands, Komodo Dragon in info board. So, you know, you're coming through here. You can peel off to the right and go under this little bridge back to our, uh, our brand new um, orangutan exhibit. Really, really cool presentation, kind of when you come under that. Um, you got the Komodo dragons to your left. We've got the big, um, like, ancient bridge here. And then what would be right here? What should we try? Obviously, I think it needs to be something small. Some of this stuff can be moved back. But when you're giving me ideas, think in the context of this smaller area. And this is what, you know, when these walls... Um, when, I'll get rid of these in a minute. When these walls are gone, get the little trash can out of here. And then, okay, we'll, whoops. Let's just get rid of some of these so you guys can kind of see what I mean when you kind of come through here. So see, you'd be coming through, and of course we'll have some kind of little fence or barrier, but it won't be big construction walls, and I just like how that is kind of open, kind of pulling you back to our little fuzzy friends over here. Like, doesn't that look better than kind of the rock climbing walls kind of obstructing that view? Just feels a lot more open through here now, I think. So, I don't know. I just, I really haven't, I really haven't looked. Um, what, I mean, could we do, see, I don't know if you want to do like, like capuchin monkeys or something, because I would have to put the netting up real high, and that would kind of defeat the purpose of being able to see across there and pulling you over. So, it kind of needs to be like a low, a low moving type of animal, one that's, you know, would stay down not one that would necessarily be climbing. Um, so yeah, you guys will have to help me out with that. Um, Cause just kind of, you know, we could we could always do an aardvark. Um, let's just kind of scroll, see if you guys get any ideas. Too small for African wild dogs. Could always do the tortoises. We do not have any any giant tortoises left in Suyana. That I could put some water down in there. We could give them, you know, we could make that look pretty cool coming through there. And we know they would be more, um, you know, more low level, could still see over them type little habitat here. We could throw a bunch of them in here, put up like just a little bit of a, of a, of, of a, uh, kind of like a barrier fencing for them. Maybe even some little logs. And then right here, bring in our fence that actually keeps the guests back. So, 
I don't know. You guys have to let me know. Should we maybe do some turtles in there? I think that could turn out pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of like my thoughts on that. Um, let's, I guess we'll, let's just take you guys around for a little bit since we haven't been in Suyana in a while. Um, this down in here, um, I know you guys are probably getting tired of these, like, just um, tours if you've kept up with this for a while, but you never know if we have new people popping in. This is, uh, just a little lower level, um, kind of like a relaxation area, sun, you know, shade area. We've got, um, like, Woody's Implied, McCall, uh, Aviary here, and then, um, once you make your way back through here, we've got a little butterfly garden back here. So this is a little more, um, a little more open. I didn't make it as dense with the trees. And you can come back here and hang out with the butterflies. I see, there's one right now. Look at those beautiful little wings. Just a little fella. That's so cute. So yeah, this is the little butterfly garden. And, um, and then of course we touched on it just a few minutes ago. This is going to be my Elephant Springs uh, area. So we're going to do some really cool things back in there. And when it's ready, we will get these gates open. Um, I found this on the workshop a long time ago too. Kind of like this East Indian, uh, just a really cool like temple type of vibe. I really like and maybe we can kind of continue that out through the springs. Um, oh, and of course, uh, remember this comes with a full parking area due to my mad genius <laughs> remnant did this whole entrance area for me all of this everything you see out here all of this foliage all of the lighting the actual car park is uh, remnant come in and redid all this for me all of this he's got the little ticket area bold up oh, they're stuck bold did me a little um custom Sienna zoo sign i love remnant kind of really just nailed that um that almost like islands of adventure vibe like look at all this like none of this is mine he did all this here's where you present your ticket go through the turnstiles um we've got like little gift shops over here restrooms Savannah, Sienna imports um if you've got a little jeep area right here you can take your picture in those people are stuck he put us little implied stingrays down here in this little pool. Just absolutely insane entrance area. He let me bring back um, Jaguar Falls. He actually had a pretty cool little set of falls up here. Um, but a lot of you guys were asking what happened to the original Jaguar Falls. So I was actually, I actually messaged him one day and I'm like, hey man, do you care if I, can I bring those back? Can I bring the, like the original falls back? And uh, he's just always super cool to work with. And he's like, yeah, man, don't go ahead. I was just kind of playing around with some different waterfall ideas. So we got that back in there. He's got the little bamboo barrier fencing here. And this is like, you know, this is asking him to step way out of his comfort zone because, you know, Remnant and those guys, they are realism masters. So I bring him in here to like my abomination of a zoo that like doesn't know what it wants to be. And it's just like a big throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks mess. And uh, he just did such an incredible job in there for me. Um, then you kind of move out through here. We've got uh, some of the shopping. We've got Riverside Trading Post. Um, going across this little bridge, big souvenir area. Um, make your way a little further and we've got uh, Basic Builders Discovery, kind of like his Riverside Depot that he, uh, that he got from, uh, that he designed for us straight out of Animal Kingdom, and then I took this design from Animal Kingdom and kind of ran with it. This is our Flights of Wonder Theater, so maybe one day we'll actually get some birds um, and we can maybe actually really create a show in there. Um, kind of making your way through here, we've got another one of Basic Builders uh, buildings over here on our left. We've got a really cool fountain I found on the workshop to kind of open up this area and look we have moved leafs river walk i've brought in the tapirs we've got them like a little we've got them like a little tapir island 
and a lagoon for them to swim in. I think they really, really enjoy it over here, um, kind of over where I had them. And you'll notice too, the river area, I've still got some animals over here I gotta get out, but that is just, it was so far over there out of the way and kind of like out of our scope of where we're building that, and I didn't want that design to go to waste. So I'm like, well, why don't we bring Leaf's River Walk over to the middle of the zoo where I still have a giant pond, but it almost looks too much. So yeah, that's kind of what we're doing where I'm retooling this area. This whole little spine through here is gonna be Leaf's River Walk. There's bold up on our horse, carefully watching over everything. And yeah, so on, on that side, you're gonna have actually the animals and then Leaf's uh, River Walk is actually gonna have some beverages and uh, also some uh, merchandise shopping uh, through here too. So it, the whole River Walk will not just be going through um, kind of in the middle of all these exhibits, but you're gonna have a little bit of retail element too. I brought in my old um, hotel facade. I thought that fit really good for his river walk and you can kind of, um, I figured this might be, we could turn it into some kind of restaurant. Cause remember I did a whole little interior lobby. We've got the registration over here where you check in. We've got the implied upstairs. Um, we've got the elevator over here. So that was the old Suyana hotel. Remember from years ago and Bold made me this sign. This is actually supposed to have some custom lettering, but I couldn't get it to work. Um, so this is just the, like the in-game lettering. But yeah, so I just think this looks so much more open and just put together than my, my, my river walk across the mountain. And so yeah, and these guys, you can tell, they just, I mean, this just, this just looks so much more natural and better for them than how I had it. And they've got plenty of access to their lagoon. And they can get up here and kind of hide in their um, in their overbrush here. Really, really fun. And here's another part um, that I was gonna show you guys. Now look, Bold's Jaguar Cafe has a clear look all the way down the river walk. So you could set up here and have lunch and literally be looking down the strip and onto the tapirs. And um, that just, I think that opens this up a lot more and kind of gives the, uh, it kind of gives the Jaguar Cafe a little more presence, you know? So freaking cool. Love, love, love this design. Do not worry, Bull. Jaguar Cafe is not going anywhere. That has got a permanent spot here in Suyana. Um, then I've got to work on this little pathway here that kind of brings you back towards um, Eben's um, uh, like apartment complex. But we know that uh, Eben has built us a ton of really cool um, exhibits in this house. So very, very fun. I figured that could also be like almost like implied manager um, shops. Um, if you keep going, you finally come around over here to uh, some more of Bold's exhibits. We've got the, um, uh, what do they call these guys? Uh, bongos? Or no, Okapis. Sorry. They've got the Okapis over here. Bold put them over here kind of like they're on their own little private hill. And then Carlos G, we've got the Amani Trail. Um, these little guys, they are fun too. These are my bongos. They are fun to come in here and watch, and, and it's it's just awesome how Carlos was able to design the. A lot of people forget when we're in Suyana that this is even here. It's so well hidden, but the guests actually come up and they use those elevated platforms to look down on our on our on our uh, bongos. So freaking cool. I need to get him to come in and do something else for me. I haven't messaged him in a long time. Like, he may tell me to go to hell. Like, I, I don't know. I haven't spoken to him, like, since he last worked on that for me. But, you know how some people are. They might just they might just not want to feel like they're bugging you or something. I'm like that. That's why if you guys ever were like, man, Estan never messages me anymore. Don't take it personal. I just, I probably feel like I'm bugging you. So I, I don't send a lot of messages. I wait till I know if you're messaging me, you want to hear from me. So that's kind of how that's how we take it. 
this is uh, this is another big question I've got to ask you all, and I'm not sure you're gonna how you're gonna feel about this. That's why I'm kind of like not messed with it yet. But what do you feel about getting rid of the floating mountains? Now we would obviously keep Savannah's. Um, you know, uh, kind of like the uh, Dwarf Cayman exhibit. We would probably move it or, you know, get something designed over here. But is this like, does this aggravate you? Is it too much? Or is it like a staple of Suyana and you don't want to see anything happen to it? Um, we've got the gorillas back here. I would like to redesign their habitat a little bit. Just, <clears throat> excuse me, just because I design better now, I feel. Um, and this is kind of just way, way big and out of control over here. So I always could slice this little section out and like maybe put crocodiles over here. Um, maybe try to come up with something better. Like, I, I might end up deleting it, you know, de even depending on what you guys say, because I was thinking of, like, it'd be really cool to have a crocodile lagoon here where the guests could walk through, like, you know, they would be on each side of the design and um, basically just kind of tone it down and remove the mountains. Um, remember, they've been there since the very beginning. Um, they're kind of an afterthought now. I don't go over there a lot. Um, so you'll have to let me know, should the floating mountains go ahead and be retired and we will get um, a really cool, maybe saltwater crocodile exhibit over here, um, get the uh, gorillas out of there and maybe come up with some kind of new um, habitat for, I was, at one time I was even thinking about putting the gorillas here and removing the stores and, uh, I thought that would be cool for Leafs River Walk. Um, but I don't know, you guys just have to tell me, just start throwing out some ideas and, uh, I will take it all into consideration, but we'll go ahead and I think we'll cut the, to we'll, we'll go ahead and quit the tour here because what have I done? I have kept you guys. Um, yeah, I've already kept you here for 22 minutes. Um, we'll go ahead and cut it here. And then when I do, when we do the next video, I'll cover more um, out here. Because this zoo, we have, uh, we have got a lot to cover. Remember, we brought in river otters now. Um, we've got the whole elephant areas changed. Um, the, uh, the giraffe, like the whole savanna area. Has, has shifted, so there's a lot to show. I started in Amer I started a, a North American area here that you know you'll you'll access by going through this tunnel. So we have just uh, where's oh yeah oh yeah my little cranes and my little deer are in here. I forgot about them. They're so cute. Yeah, they would absolutely escape, but I love having them in here. This is like my, one of my new little grass kind of experiments. Put that underwater grass mixed in with the in-game grass. Oh, he's coming over to say hello. Hello. <laughs> hello, pretty boy. But yeah, kind of do some, doing some experiment with some grass. Very pretty boy. Really fun to watch them forage. So yeah, this is uh, this is kind of once you're once you're past the giraffe in the savanna area, it is going to transition into a North America, and then of course, uh, pea blades, gorgeous uh, Fox Mountain over here, <coughs> Valley of the Fox Spirit. Excuse me, and bolds. Tiger habitat. We uh, we turned breeding on for a little bit, so we've got a we got a little bit of Tiger King going on. Probably gonna have to get rid of some of these guys. Not my white one. That is so cool. They kind of they went a little breed happy when that was. I think I accidentally turned that on. 
But yeah, this is so freaking cool. This is one of my favorite views in all of Siana. And Bold made it to where you can walk behind the waterfall there. So freaking cool. But yeah, that is how Suyana has evolved late 2022, early 2023. So we have deleted and moved a lot, a lot, lot. Still a lot to do. So anyways, guys, I'm uh, sorry for bugging you for about 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm glad you guys stopped by and still hang out with me a little bit. But uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. You'll probably have to go back and rewatch this and go over all of my questions that I've asked you. But uh, if you can, leave me some feedback below. I always read the feedback and uh, maybe kind of see if you can steer me in a fun, entertaining direction for some of this stuff. Um, and big question, like we said, I'll leave you with is the Suyana Floating Mountain. So anyways, yes, I'm S. Dan Wolf. As always, thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me. And I'll catch you in the next video.